Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It is a cloudy and windy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And little dog and I, we are taking a break from ripping down what I hope will be the new tiny shed at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Good Lord, what a job. But anyway, I'm going to sit here and relax for a few minutes doing what I try to do every Friday. I felt like I just did this on Monday, but it is now Friday, February 18th. So we are going to dive into my ecological meltdown roundup rant once again. We head over to mongabay.com to see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls. Uh, doing what they do, which is chronicling the collapse of a planet, a little heavy on the hopium this week. Uh, <laughs> I never know whether to put Rhett's hopium in the Friday roundup, in the Saturday hopium roundup, or just ignore it altogether. Like, you know, the leadoff article Jordan scrambles to save rare red sea corals that can withstand climate change. Yes. In Jordan, researchers, activists, and fishers are hopeful, are hopeful that their coral reefs can survive climate change. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, who is what environmental activist is going to prison or getting killed or whatever. A mayor in the Philippines took on a mine and lost her job. Yes, when nickel mining firm Ipilan Nickel Corporation began felling trees in a protected forest. Yes, Mayor Mary Jean Feliciano moved aggressively to stop them after sending cease and desist orders and failing ultimately to prevent the felling of 7,000 trees. She used her authority to shut down the co company's operations. Yes. The company fought back, and the court sided with the company, ruling that Feliciano be suspended without pay for a year. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Did you realize that air pollution makes it tough for pollinators and everyone else to stop and smell the flowers? Common air pollutants, such as those found in car exhaust fumes, react with floral scents, leading to reduced pollination by insects. Yep, yep, yep. Um, the presence of air pollution resulted in up to 90% fewer flower visits and one-third less pollination than in a smog-free field. Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, past the hopium. Yes, this is... Uh, more hopium. I'm just going to skip over the, I'm just going to skip over the, uh, the hopium. All right. I love it. When, Indone when Indonesia retook land from developers, it gave them, the developers, a solid case to sue. All right. The Indonesian government's decision to revoke permits, to revoke permits for oil plantation firms to operate in forest areas could lead to lawsuits filed by the, by the companies. So take a wild guess why these planet eaters permits to, uh, you know, log inside a forest to build more oil palm plantations. Why do you think the permits 
were revoked. The permits were rescinded at the start of the year not because of any environmental violations, well, yet anyway, but rather because the planet eaters were deemed to be moving too slowly in exploiting the resources. There you go. If you are too slow in moving to exploit resources in Indonesia, you will have your permit to exploit the resources revoked so they can give them to someone who will, you know, exploit the resources faster. That is probably the only way to get an oil palm plantation permit revoked is to not do it, you know, not log the forest to put in your oil palm plantation. There you go. All right, let's head over to Sub-Saharan Africa. Let's go over to Namibia, connecting dots between Canada and Namibia. Recon Africa pushes ahead with Namibia oil exploration amid claims of violations. Canadian oil and gas company Recon Africa has announced it will enter a second phase of petroleum exploration in Namibia. Campaigners and community members say the company has not conducted the environmental impact assessments necessary to extend its operations. Yes, the company has been accused of viol violating several laws by encroaching into untouched forest. Yes, opponents of the company say they will consider legal action if the violations continue. Well, if the Namibia, uh, if Namibia is anything like Indonesia, and I expect it will be, the only way this Canadian planet eater over there in Namibia will get in any trouble with the Namibian government is if they don't if they don't move in to untouched forests. That is the way you get in trouble with environmental regulators. All right. Uh, again, more hopium. Uh, I got a lot to do here. Uh, this is probably the same nickel mine we were hearing about to open this rat. Red seas and no fish. Nickel mining takes its toll on Indonesian spice islands. Fishermen in Indonesia's Obi Islands blame nickel mining and smelting industries for the depletion of fish in their traditional fishing grounds. Researchers say the pollution has turned the coastal waters into a mud puddle because of the high levels of heavy metal contamination. Yes, uh, the company had previously proposed dumping, dumping six million tons of waste per year into the sea, but is back down on that one following protests, and they're now proposing clearing a forest area to build a tailings dam, a plan that activists and fishermen say is no better, you know, than dumping it right in the ocean because of the persistently high risk of environmental contamination. I think we have several uh, collapsed tailings dams into Brazil to uh, look at you know, all right, more hopium, uh, okay, so here is some hopium that even I might be able to get by. Study suggests that tropical forests can regenerate naturally if we let them. Yes, do you think so? Uh, it is called getting humans out of 
the way. Get humans out of the way. We've gone in there, we've raped and pillaged the forest, and instead of humans manning, you know, that this debate has been going on long enough, uh, the best way to fix damage caused by humans is to get humans out of the way. Make anywhere on the planet, preferably the entire planet, a human exclusion zone. There is one way for nature to recover from humans, and that is to get humans out of the way. We screw up every single thing we touch. We are bulls in a china cabinet. Anyway, I, I, I can't resist right here in the, uh, in the headline. There is, there is, there is uh, hope for North Atlantic right whales. The North, the, the documentary, the last of the, you know, the correctly named documentary, Last of the Right Whales, seems to, seeks, yeah, seems, uh, seeks to bring the plight of these gentle giants to audiences that are largely unaware of how close to extinction these species is today. The biggest threats to the species now are ship strikes and entanglement in fishing gear. There are now a grand total of an estimated 336 of the animals still alive on the planet today, more than 80% of which have already experienced entanglement in ropes tethered to fishing gear on the seafloor. A documentary director, Nadine Pakaneza, yes, explains to Magda Bay why she holds out, holds out, holds out hope for the whale's future. I love it. The woman making a documentary titled Last of the Right Whales holds out hope for the last 336 individual whales, 80% of which have already had at least one run-in with fishing gear. Yes. Anyway, guys, there is a lot here, uh, but I have got to get back to work. So, uh, I, I love this one. Here, here's some hopium. Uh, could abandoning protections save South African abalone? Yes. A new report exposes multi-layered damages associated with the abalone poaching industry between South Africa and East Asia. Yep, 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 yep. A highly organized supply chain has led to the near depletion of these species. Mm -hmm, blah, blah, blah. So, with decades of anti-poaching efforts failing to curb the illicit trade, the authors of the report suggest a radical change of policy, letting the abalone go commercially extinct. There you go. Yes, could letting abalone go extinct save South African abalone. How about letting the humans go extinct? Uh, how about abandoning protections for humans? Just an idea. All right. Okay, more uh, cracked skulls of people 
taking on Indonesian planet eaters, the heavy-handed arrest of 67 people, including 13 children by police in Indonesia, has shown a spotlight on long-simmering opposition to a planned mine in central Java. Yes, those arrested are residents of the village that would, the site of a planned mine that would provide the rocks needed to build a nearby dam. The villagers have opposed the mining plan for years, citing environmental concerns. Right groups and legal aid advocates accuse the police of using excessive violence, but the government says the project will go ahead regardless. Yes, it was the government who sent the cops. And uh, I love this with all of this, with all of these stories out of Indonesia. Yes, have all of these stories out of Indonesia, and then we have this one, this hilarious knee slapper from the Hopium Files. Indonesia to tighten regulation on tuna harvesting and bid for sustainability. Yes. The fishery, the Indonesians, the Indonesian fisheries ministry says having a set of rules in place will be crucial to protecting the country's wild tuna stock. Yes. The move will also help the government's ongoing greenwashing push to achieve sustainability certification for its fisheries and open them up to the growing global demand for eco-labeled seafood. Yes, Indonesian fisheries have long been plagued by poaching and destructive fishing practices. Okay, one more time. I, I don't know if Rhett doesn't understand this or what. Okay, Rhett, I hate to be such a Debbie Downer, Rhett, but uh, well, one, one more time, brother. I love you, brother, but, okay, listen to me. There is no such thing as a sustainable tuna harvest. Okay. The growing global demand for eco-labeled seafood is unadulterated green washing horse shit. Rhett Butler knows this as well as Sancho Panza knows this. These eco-labels, they're, uh, you know, reading uh, this novel, The Every, uh, talking about, you know, th these eco-labels, uh, you know, like everything on the planet uh, is going to have an eco-label on it. I, I mean, there, there's people who make a lot of money in these big corporations coming up with eco-labels. I would like to see the, uh, the toll on the planet just in the manufacture and distribution of eco-labels. All right, good Lord. On and on. Oh, I love this. Wasn't it just recently? Was it, I, oh, it was, I guess I was reading the Caterpillar Sustainability Pledge, but I can virtually guarantee you that if I went over to John Deere Corporation, we could find their sustainability pledge. John Deere and Brazilian Bank team up to equip farmers deforesting the Amazon. Yes, 
far as farmers whose properties have been embargoed, whatever that word means, embargoed by environmental authorities in Brazil for deforestation have still been able to access government subsidized loans to buy John Deere tractors. The five farmers identified in the investigation received a combined $5.4 million in loans under a program administered by the state-owned Brazilian Development Bank and underwritten by the John Deere Bank, a wholly owned subsidiary of the U.S. farm equipment manufacturer. Yes, under bank, central bank rules in Brazil, farms that have been embargoed for deforestation are barred from accessing credit. Yes, you can see how much uh, that is working. Imagine that the Brazilian Development Bank teaming up with John Deere, as long as we're talking about deforestation in the Amazon rainforest with or with help, without help from John Deere tractors, January deforestation in the Amazon, the highest in 14 years. Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon last month was the highest of any January dating back to 2008, according to Brazil's own government statistics, which means they are a joke. According to the Brazilian government's data, 430 square miles of rainforest was chopped down in January, a 400% rise over January 2021. Okay, you will not believe that uh, Africans are not happy with the UK's new trophy hunting ban. Gee, imagine why would a sub-Saharan African be against a trophy hunting ban, sending all those murdered animals back to the UK to hang on the wall? All right. Uh, anyway, guys, this goes on and on and on. Uh, all right, one more, <coughs> and I got to get back to work. We're going to end up in Brazil. Fears of oil spills as ExxonMobil seeks to drill at the mouth of a Brazilian river. U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil is seeking to drill 11 wells in a marine area near the estuary of the San Francisco River in eastern Brazil. In the event of an accident, at least 52 conservation units would be affected, including a barrier reef that is a priority for conservation. Yes, the company is still awaiting an environmental license, but has already started to train local fishing communities on how to deal with possible oil spills. Yes. Communities, meanwhile, say they have been largely excluded from consultation on the project, which regulators have held online despite the lack of internet connectivity in the most affected areas. Do you think so? I just got to real quickly go over to see John Deere Sustainability 
All right, John Deere sustainability report. Yes. Here we go. Of course, this looks like from 2020. I don't know if they had a sustainability report. Our strategy in action. Yes. Sustainable forest management. Sustainable sugar cane harvesting. Yes. This is their leap ambitions, which aligns our new business goals with new sustainability goals. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> All right. This is part of their sustainability, the 2021 uh, highlights. $44 billion in net sales and revenues, net sales and revenues, $44 billion for the sustainable corporation, $315 million engaged acres whatever the word engaged acres means. Gotta love, that sounds like a real sustainability. 315 million acres, 440,000, 440,000 total machines in agriculture and construction Okay, sustainability innovations launched in 2021. Here is the sea and spray. Here is the integrated exact rate liquid fertilizer. And I guess the sustainable sugar cane harvester the sustainable cotton harvester is their greenhouse gas emissions down 4% in 2021. Anyway, I wonder how many of those 440,000 uh, sustainable machines and how many of those 315 million acres were those little backroom deals with corrupt Brazilian politicians to uh, sell uh, planet eating sustainable planet eating machines to crooked farmers in Brazil anyway we got to wrap this up because I need to get back out there and start uh, ripping nails out of siding. Just a little long. Get out there and rip some nails while you still can. Bye, guys. You ready to go get swirlies like that?